Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. A database is designed to store information and retrieve it at a later point in time in a format that you wish to see using only the data that you need to see. The many objects in a database work together to allow you to do this. However, in order to create an effective database, we must learn how to design and create many different types of objects. This is one of the primary reasons that database design is more difficult than many other types of applications. Let's examine the various types of objects in a basic database and what they are used for in the overall scheme of the database's design. So first, we have tables. Tables are the building blocks of a database. They contain all of the information that is to be stored, manipulated, and retrieved. Everything in a database is fundamentally dependent on the tables and their structure. So while these objects are often the ones with which most users are familiar, it's important not to approach table design haphazardly. Errors made during the creation and design of the data tables will often cascade those problems to the related objects, forcing you to go back and recreate or edit other related objects if you proceed with your database's design too quickly. Actually, creating well-designed data tables and joining them appropriately is one of the most difficult aspects of database design. It is certainly the aspect with which many users have the most difficulty understanding and it is also the most important aspect of database design. The next type of object is the query. A query extracts just the records that you want or need to see from a table. This is the heart of database design and the whole point of using databases. The queries are the workhorses in a database, pulling the data that we need and usually working in the background. So mastering queries will also be an important part of creating a database. While queries are mainly used to extract data for reporting, we will also look at how they can be used to modify data in our databases as well. Next we have forms. Forms are typically used as user interfaces for our data tables. They are also used to control program flow. A form typically allows users of the database to edit data in the tables, or click buttons on the form that might launch reports or other types of database objects. Forms could be considered the face of your database, as they are all that an end user will commonly see when using a finished database application. We must also learn how to create and edit reports. Reports are commonly used as a way of showing data pulled from queries in a more printer-friendly format than the query itself, which tends to look much like a table. Reports can also perform secondary calculation and analysis on query data, making them powerful analysis tools. Pages are data access pages used for accessing data on web servers. They're basically HTML forms. While they certainly have the ability to become powerful tools for web-based data applications, they have a drawback. The user who accesses a page must have access installed on their computer for them to work. So as such, they're good for intranet deplo deployment, but they lack reliability on the internet. So for internet-based data forms, you would want to use an actual HTML editor, like Microsoft's front page instead. Macros are small bits of visually created programming that help automate processes in a database. For example, if you wanted a user to click a button in a form that launched a report, you could create a macro that automatically runs the report first and then attach the macro to the button so that when someone clicks the button, it runs the macro, thus running the report. Modules are basically like macros. However, they are created in a non-visual environment. When creating modules, you actually have to type code into a separate application, which is Microsoft Visual Basic. It uses a sister language of that language called Visual Basic for Applications, or VBA for short, to create programs that can be much more complex in nature than the ones created by the macros. Most amateur designers will not make much use of modules, but they can become invaluable for the professional database designer. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.